want to talk today about uh, building a all fiber optic Michelson interferometer. I don't know if any of you have been experimenting with this kind of thing, but the problem with building a fiber optic interferometer with single mode cable is that uh, you run into some very unique problems when it comes to passing uh, two beams down different uh, paths along the uh, single mode fiber. I'll just show you an example here with a 2x2 coupler. Let's say we inject uh, some laser light into the 2x2 coupler starting here and then we have our two unique paths that the beam passes along and then we try and uh, put these two beams back together maybe with another coupler and measure the interference between them. What's going to happen is that we're not going to see any interference at all. The problem is that the beams actually don't maintain their state of polarization along the single mode fiber because they undergo random changes in birefringence as they pass along the fibers. Now, uh, you need a strategy to compensate for this problem. And one of the ways that this can be done is by using what's called a Faraday rotator mirror. And I'll just show that right here. Uh, these can be got from, for low cost from some different Chinese optical suppliers. And what they do is they uh, compensate for the birefringence that occurs along the first half of the paths, you know, let's say in a Michelson interferometer. And by doing that, you can actually get interference between the two beams when they are put back together at the other side. Now, uh, another thing we're going to do is, uh, in order to make our uh, signal visible, uh, we're going to be actuating one of these mirrors along the path. So we'll have two, two mirrors, one at the end of each arm of the Michelson interferometer. And we're going to attach on one of them a piezoelectric actuator, which is going to pull this mirror back and forth and lengthen the length of one arm. And that's going to allow us to see an alternating interference pattern, which will show up as an AC signal. So here's a schematic of the interferometer we're going to be building. We're starting off with a DFB laser at 13-10 nanometers approximately. The light from this laser is going to pass through our 2x2 two two coupler. Then it's going to head down this optical path. And uh, it's going to go around, actually go this way. It'll uh, come to our Faraday rotator mirror, uh, bounce back, and go back through to our detector. Uh, the other arm, it's going to go around, uh, I guess, this way. And it's going to go to our uh, Faraday rotator mirror then bounce back and go back to our detector. We're also going to have our actuator attached to this mirror. This one will stay stationary. So this one will be pulled back and forth to generate our AC signal between the, uh, the two beams at our detector. So you can see here we've got uh, the two signals on the oscilloscope. The lower signal is a uh, oscillating uh, length on uh, a Faraday rotation mirror, which is over here on one of the arms. Uh, the uh, arm here on the lateral side also has a Faraday rotating mirror. Each arm is about two meters in length. We've got the signal being processed through an amplifier and then an active filter, which then goes to the oscilloscope. And we can see here now the signals fairly clearly. Um, they come into phase as the, uh, the length changes kind of spontaneously from um, one wavelength difference to another. So right now we're at out of phase and it'll probably slowly drift to in phase over a certain period of time. It's very, very sensitive to vibration. So we have to uh, trigger it or stimulate it with a signal at around about uh, 20 hertz in order to make the interference pattern visible, otherwise it just gets swamped by all of the DC signal because the interference signal is fairly weak um, when the interferometer is this length. So uh, it's being driven this at, at uh, 1310 nanometers, and uh, we've just got the laser shown here going through a 2x2 two two coupler to the two arms. And it's a DFB laser we're using with internal isolation. So in part two of the uh, next video, what we're going to do is we're going to try and do something a little more sophisticated with this Michelson interferometer. And we're going to build uh, one with the automatic data logging, and it's going to be put on a rotating platform. And this is going to let us uh, perform a couple of relativity type experiments. In particular, we're going to do a Kennedy-Thorndike type experiment, and also a Shamir and Fox experiment.